So uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our kitchen. Um, this morning, it's slightly different to normal uh, because we have got a V-Day uh, theme. So we are V-Day theme today. We have got all the bunting up today for our VE themed uh, practical because um, uh, I thought with V-Day on Friday, the uh, Friday the 8th, it'd be a great opportunity to be able to do some VE Day uh, recipes with you all today. So that is exactly what we're going to do. We've got three recipes but they're quite quick recipes okay so please don't worry about oh can i get them all done if you can't get them all done in one then you can always pause rewind and carry on with that one um so uh, my name's mr man and this is millie say hello millie Hi. uh millie's going to help us with a lot of these recipes and we're going to have a go and have some fun with these uh today as well all right now uh, if you are watching this one from talkie girls grammar uh, fabulous, great to see you. Um, there's lots of you on board today, which is great to see you. Um, just leave your messages down the side there, that's fabulous as normal, and then we will uh, uh, get in contact with you and we can talk to you through things as we're going along. Lots of questions about the ingredients, um, which is great. I'm going to talk about those as well, some opportunities and different things we can do with those ingredients for lockdown larders and what we have got and what we haven't got. And like I say, you can play with these recipes, you can adapt these recipes, and these recipes were meant for adaptation. That's what they were for in the first place, okay? Um, so uh, I'm going to talk you through that one and we'll go through it. If you're watching this on YouTube, fantastic. It's great to be able to see you join us from all around the world today um, at Talkie Girls Grammar. So we have people in Africa, Canada, um, where else do we say? Japan and China, yeah, like all over the world at the moment joining us at Talkie Girls Grammar, which is fabulous news. It's great to have you on board with us. Now, if you're doing that, you're probably watching this on YouTube, in which case, leave your comments along the bottom there rather than the side where uh, the girls will be leaving their comments, okay? And we'll get back to you on that. Right. So it's VE Day on Friday. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean? Um, so uh, we are honouring uh, victory in Europe um, after the Second World War. Um, and as happened 75 years ago, there will be lots of these things up, lots of this bunting up all around you, uh, around your houses as everyone celebrated uh, that victory in Europe. Um, so uh, now, although it was victory in Europe, they were still in rations, okay? Um, shops, you could only buy a certain number of eggs, okay, so one egg a week. Um, uh, you could only buy a certain amount of foods, you weren't allowed to bulk buy foods. So it's a bit like, not as much bad as, uh, as, as then, but it's a bit like the lockdown we were, we're in at the moment, where you can only buy a certain number of things. Um, so what happened was the government back in the day, 75 years ago, um, what they said was, they said, uh, right, so let's try and encourage people to use what ingredients you might have be able to get hold of in your lockdown larders back then. Um, so what was what was in rationing allowed then? What could you use? What could you make? Because they couldn't get hold of eggs very much. So these are all egg free recipes. We've got egg free cake, uh, we've got an egg free scones, um, and it's reduced amounts of uh, fats and sugars because you can't couldn't get as much of those. So, um, and we can play with these. So, um, we've got recipes which have got syrup. We can put honey in, okay? Uh, corn starches, uh, uh, corn syrups in. You can put all sorts of those different things in. So, um, we've got different sorts of recipes coming up, and you can adapt because that's what they were for. These are what's called mock wartime recipes. Um, they were to try and replace what was a traditional recipe with mock recipes. So we take things out and we put things in. So where you can't put fats or sugars in, we replace it with vegetables like carrots and potatoes. And there were lots of things in the war about um, uh, trying to get people to eat more of things that they might have available or things they can get hold of instead of other ingredients. OK, so your challenge today is to try and have a go at some of these wartime recipes and we've got three for you to try. Um, and hopefully some of you can uh, can be kicking along with all of them or some of them. And uh, your challenge is to try and create a wartime uh, recipes. And these recipes will be perfect if you're having your own uh, lockdown uh, at home VE day party on Friday. Uh, so these would be great for that. So we've got say three recipes. Let me go through these three recipes before we talk anymore. Maybe it's going to come. You've got some facts for today. You've got no, not going to get to get I might do some wartime facts as we go through. All right, uh, let's uh, let's go through the recipe. I'm going to uh, quickly. I'm going to stop talking for a minute and go through what we're doing. All right. So to start with, um, I say we're doing wartime recipes. So we've got three things here. Now this sound, uh, this uh, does it tastes a lot better than it sounds. We've got an uncooked chocolate cake. Okay, uh, which is, seems odd, um, but works. Uh, carrot cookies, which I can tell you tasted amazing yesterday. We had some of those yesterday. And finally, potato scones. 
OK, so these would be um, ingredients that they were the government at the time. What was called the Ministry of Food uh, was trying to encourage us to eat more of um, and look at replacements in our recipes. OK, so let's look at these recipes. Um, the recipe number one, we have got potato scones. So we're going to peel and well, I'm not going to peel, he's going to peel and chop um, our potato in a bit. And then we're going to mash it up and we're going to put it into our uh, scones to bulk out our recipe to make it a bit bigger. Um, so we're going to be doing that one. We're mashing up potato now, depending on how many you want to make of these, you can just go with a couple of it. We're only going to use one potato on this one. Um, so one potato, we're going to use some self-raising flour. But if you haven't got self-raising flour, plain flour with a little bit of baking powder in will work just fine with that one. We're going to have a little you can add a little bit extra baking powder just to make them rise up a little bit more because it'll be heavier with the potato. That's all there for you. Um, uh, we've got the um, we're going to be mixing in if you want to go there a little bit of uh, milk into that. I'm going to make some beautiful potato scones. OK, they're really, really nice. Um, OK, um, well, the next one we're going to do is we're going to be doing a chocolate cake. This is the uncooked chocolate cake, which again sounds really, really weird. But trust me when I say this is absolutely amazing. Um, and with all of these, we're going to be putting a spot of vanilla. Actually, oddly enough, I was researching all this. Although um, uh, say they were in rationing at times there with, when you went to the supermarket, then you couldn't buy or go to the shops there and you wouldn't be able to buy um, uh, a huge amount because they could only they limited stock. So they only limited you what you could buy. Vanilla was one thing that they did seem to have during the war. OK, World War Two and after World War Two. Right? Vanilla. Um, they used a, uh, something called a vanilla e uh, flavoring and um, an essence, whereas we're using proper extract today. Um, so you can choose on that one. I've said to say golden syrup in these this one, but if you haven't got golden syrup, then a corn syrup or a honey would work just as well with that one. Um, and we're using uh, breadcrumbs. Um, we're using breadcrumbs there and we're going to be uh, using some stale breadcrumbs. Now, if you haven't got stale breadcrumbs, uh, let's just in the long cupboard. Um, if you haven't got stale breadcrumbs, we can make that and we can use some just some uh, bread. And what we can do with the bread is we can just cheese grate the bread up and then we'll put it onto a tray. And then what we'll do then is we can just crisp it up in the oven. And once it's crisped up in the oven, then what we'll, and we'll talk you through this one. We can crush it up and put it into this one. OK, so that's our uncooked chocolate cake and we'll talk you through that one in a moment as well. Um, so how that how that works, you end up with a lovely firm cake, but just leave it in the um, in the fridge for an hour or so. So we can show you the one we made yesterday to give you an idea of how that turned out. OK, final challenge is carrot cookies. Now, odd sounds odd, 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 odd. But trust me again when I say this, these taste absolutely divine. We had these yesterday afternoon and they are really, really yummy. Um, you can see them down there in the corner, the ones that we made yesterday. Um, so again, looking to replace the huge amounts of sugar with um, uh, fruit and vegetables to create the sugar. So we have got sugar in there, but we're reducing those, um, looking at what you might be able to be rationed at the time of 75 years ago at the end of World War II um, compared with um, um, a bit like, say, a bit like a lockdown now where you can only buy a certain number of eggs or a certain number amount of flour from shops nowadays. It's a very similar sort of situation. So it, we, we, it's a good place to be and it's a good thing to get ready for our parties on Friday. All right, before I carry on, let's go back to me. Um, that's the three recipe challenge. I'd like you to have a go at, uh, so have a go with those. Uh, I'm just going to send myself live. Millie's uh, busy weighing up ingredients as I talk at the moment. Um, uh, so you're going to come back over here, Millie, and we'll just get ourselves ready. So like I say, we're in our our, our theme V Day um, um, party mood today to get ready for our cooking up our lovely party food ready for Friday. So you'll stay at home. Um, Friday V Day party. So you might be doing them on, on the internet, social media, Zoom, Facebook Live, whatever you're using the social media wise, you might be having your party um, with other people in your street, but virtually, virtual parties um, on Friday. Um, right across the world as well, uh, as some people come in and out of lockdown um, different times around the world. Um, OK, so the first thing we need to do before we begin any of these things, like we would do in class, is we need to get ourselves ready. And that's all about the food hygiene. So uh, when we're talking about food hygiene, we need to make sure you are ready to cook. And we've talked about this many times before, but I'm just going to quickly recap and I'm not going to talk about it for too long because Millie keeps telling me I talk for too long on this. So, so I'm going to I'm not going to talk for too long. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go through very quickly the food hygiene and then we'll go through that together. So uh, very, very quickly then before you start to cook, things you need to be aware of. 
OK, you need to get your area ready. You need to get yourself ready and you need to get your equipment ready. And we call that Hattie. It's the easy way to remember get about getting ready before you cook. Now, but getting ready before you cook is what we call the mise en place, mise en place there. And the hat, that comes from the French to put in place or to get ready. And how, what is it? H. H for Hattie stands for tie your hair back or wear a hat and wash your hands. OK, A is apron, put your apron on. T is getting your tabletop ready and clean, ready, really important. T next T is for a tray, very useful piece to have to collect the next two, which is I for ingredients and E for equipment. OK, that's getting yourself ready. All right, so let's let's do that now. Let's do that all together so that we uh, know that we are safe and ready to cook before we start making some party food, which we want to do. Um, OK, so, so before we start making party food, let's go and get ourselves ready. Um, we're going to hop, skip and a jump over to our um, sink and we're going to get ourselves ready and then we're going to go straight on with the recipe. So welcome to the kitchen. I say fully, fully look at this. The whole kitchen's been done up today, uh, ready for the day today. Uh, there we go. So um, here we are back over at the sink. And as we would do normally with um, when we're doing the sink, we need some soap. Thank you, Millie. Um, and I need some soap as well. Thank you. Uh, so when you're brushing it, washing your hands, make, don't forget to make sure you're doing it normally like that with some nice big soap. Both now do it inside the fingernails, both sides inside the fingernails. Make sure you clean that. Make sure you're doing round the thumbs, both sides, round the thumbs. Excellent. Don't get the back of the hands, back of the hands, round the wrists, round the wrists. Get a bit of a workout this morning. I feel a little bit like another Joe that I know uh, who does a bit of workout in the morning there. We're doing it work, wash, wash up workout. Um, OK, now um, soapy water. So make sure you've got hot soapy water. You need to rub your hands together. We're both doing that one together now today. Let's speed this process up. Um, rubbing your hands together as normal, then the fingers, both sides, then the thumbs, both sides, then the back of the hands, both sides. Don't forget those wrists. And we need to make sure we're properly cleaned off, washed up and ready to go. All right, nearly done, nearly done there. So we'll dry ourselves off, switch those taps off. Sleeves rolled up. Now you can see um, we haven't had, we've skipped the hair because I haven't got a lot of it and Millie's already got hers tied up. So we don't need to worry so much about the hair tying up for the two of us. Um, but we do need to make sure about the apron. So let's get ourselves and get our aprons on and ready to cook. So we need to get, you've got your apron on. Let's get your aprons on at home, please. So there we go. We're just doing that now. Oh, get my chef whites on. And you need to make sure your aprons are on to protect you from your food and your food from you. We don't want any bits into our party food, so please make sure you've got all your aprons on. And while Millie's putting her apron on, I'm just putting my school chef whites on for you. And then I'm just going to get my apron on too. And then we're going to get started on the first of the recipe. Now, we've got three recipe challenges here for you this morning for our, our, locked, for our wartime VE day recipes. Um, but we're going to be um, we're going to be jumping between them a little bit because we need to get some things ready that are going to take a bit longer than other things. Now, the two things that are going to take the longest to get ready is going to be our potatoes for mashing when we make our potato scones and our bread for our uncooked chocolate cake. OK, so we're going to need to do a couple of things. Um, yeah, we're going to we're going to go hop, skip and jump back over here. We're going to go. Do oh, you see there? Look, we've got all our V day themes all around the house today. Look for you all bunting everywhere. We're getting right into the party field today at home. Um, OK, so um, a few things we need to get ready. First of all, um, we're going to I would suggest if you haven't got stale breadcrumbs, we do the stale breadcrumbs bit first for the uncooked chocolate cake. So we've got a tray and that's what I just want you to do oh, with some bread. Um, and this is just some old bread. Here we go. If you've got some old bread, if not um, anything, old bread rolls, um, croissant, if you've got uh, some croissant at home, any kind of pastry items. So we've got some bread here. Maybe just need to get some bread out. And um, we're, we're very simply, we're just gonna we're just gonna crumble it up. You can use a cheese grater if you want to. Um, we can just literally um, get to the, prop that bread up and we can just um, grate it with a large cheese grater and then we're all crumble it up. And we're just doing that onto a baking tray there. So we're just going to put that into the baking tray and I'm going to put this into the oven for a little bit to, so that we can uh, harden them up. So we've got to cut stale breadcrumbs. So if you haven't got stale breadcrumbs, this is the best way to do it. Use some bread that might be going off. Give it a bit of a cheese grate, which we're doing now. Millie's tearing it up. I'm cheese grating it up. We're going to get that into the oven. Um, we're going to put that on a low heat and we're just going to let them sort of almost toast off to get and Then we'll crush them up again and give ourselves some really nice and bready pieces. Um, yesterday uh, we used some some old uh, pastries 
um, to do it and it, it worked just as well as breadcrumbs. But the idea is that let's say this is this is a wartime recipe for the end of the war. So it's whatever you've got to hand. So if you've got stale bread, if you've got any stale uh, rolls, um, if you've got any using up all those leftovers rather than buying new ingredients, things that you might have at home. It's a great way of using up all of those things. Don't forget, let's say finding food was a bit of a mission, a bit like it is at the moment. Um, if you can't get to the shops, we've, I've not been to the shops for nine weeks. Crazy. We have been very lucky with deliveries and farms around here and places we can walk to. But um, like I say, it's a bit tricky. And it would have been at the time as well, 75 years ago, tricky to get hold of your food, tricky to get hold of your ingredients. So that's why we're doing these recipes today um, for you. All right, um, these, these, so these are what we call wartime mock recipes. So we're trying to use alternative ingredients that you might find at home using up things that we've got at home. So that we've got that one. We've got lots there. This is good and good. Many well done. All right. So should we show the, show the audience? Show, the, show everyone at home what's going on there. Uh, so we've got there torn up bits of bread, grated bits of bread. We're just going to put this one on a low heat into the oven. Oh, um, probably about 10 minutes. Good, good question. Probably about 10 minutes there. We'll get those one on the, um, put it on for about 180, 180, 190. Um, that should be fine there to put them on there. So we're just going to put them into the oven for a moment while we, we get ready for those. All right. Um, so uh, that is um, the first bit. Now that's this first bit is going to take the longest amount of time. So let's um, let's think about what else is going to take a bit of time. Um, that's going to be the boiling of the potatoes. So we're using potatoes, but you can use any kind of root vegetable on this one. Um, I couldn't find the recipes. Uh, right, let me just get that recipe up there. Uh, um, OK, not to worry. I'm going to put the recipes back up for you. So just a moment there um, or, and I'll get those ones back on the board for you again. Um, but um, we'll, you can always rewind if you want to the recipes and pause them on the screen. But I'm going to keep putting them up on the board for you throughout um, throughout this lesson. So someone's just messaging me down the side there. Um, let me just uh, let me just see. We've got some more messages this morning before we get going. What can we use instead of breadcrumbs? Yeah, so anything. If you want to actually just add more flour into the product, that would work well instead of breadcrumbs there. We can use that. But any old bits of cake, if you've got any stale cake at home, any kind of uh, bread rolls at home, any pastries at home, or if you haven't, just get some bread and do exactly what we just did there, which is grate it, tear it up, put it onto an oven tray, put it into the oven for about 10 minutes at 180, and then you'll get yourself some stale breadcrumbs if you haven't got some at home. Um, what temperature should the oven be on? Well done, Millie. So you saw the answer that, what is it? 180. 180, thank you. 180, 190. There we go. So there we, that's for you. Anymore. Can we use uh, butter crumbs instead? Yeah, you can use what you want to this one. It will still work and it will create a beautiful cake. Honestly, it works really nicely. We're very happy with it. The cake looks good, doesn't it? We'll get that one out for everyone so in, in a moment. All right. Um, so the next one that's going to take a bit of time is getting the potato prepped. Okay, so we've got time on our hands at the moment. We've got time on our hands. We're in lockdown. Um, uh, we've got, uh, we got that little bit of extra time on our hands. So we need to get the potato. So we've gone with a big potato, haven't we, Millie? Potato. Uh, it's a big potato. Uh, now, what Millie's going to do with this big potato is um, she's going to get that potato and she is going to peel that potato. Um, so be very careful when you're peeling the potato. Let me just show everyone there. We've got um, two types of peeler, type of main peelers. You've probably got a long peeler like that, or you've got a peeler across the top. Just be careful when you're peeling it because those are little knives, okay? So just make sure you're peeling away from your hands so you don't get onto that yeah, in there. So Millie's just going to peel that one away, okay? Um, once she's peeled that, we're going to chop that one up small and I'll just show you the bridge and the claw reminder about the cuts there. We're going to chop it up really, really small. We're going to get it into a pan of boiling water. So if there's somebody at home with you at the moment in the kitchen, you might want to just see if they want to pop the kettle on. OK, if you, um, pop the kettle on. We've already done ours. Ours is ready to go. Pop the kettle on just and then we've got some boiling water to go straight away for our pan with our potato. So what we're going to do is going to get that potato. We're going to chop it up tiny, tiny, small. We're going to put it into the pan with some boiling water so the boiling water covers it over. We're going to let it simmer for about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how many potatoes you're using. We're probably going to be OK with 10 minutes with this just one large one chopped up small. Um, once it's done that well, we'll just put our fork in and if it starts to fall apart, that's where we'll be with our potato um, being cooked. We'll then drain it off. We'll show you that and then we'll mash it up and put it into our potato scones. OK, so um, uh, that's that's how we're going to go. How's the peeling going, Millie? She's doing a good job. Look at that. It's potato and it's peeled. Um, so she's peeling the potato there for us right now. While she's doing that one, let me just um, say, uh, let's see, we've got some more questions down the side here from 
um, the Girls of Talky Girls Grammar, where we are broadcasting this live at the moment. Uh, do, 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 any more questions there? No, that one's good. That one's good. We've just answered that one. Um, OK, so um, we, we're just going to get those potatoes in. Let me just uh, show you so that what the steps of this on the recipe cards, so you know what we're going to be doing, why we're moving on to the potato one first. So let me just, uh, just get that on the screen for you then. And we're just going to come out of our party room and to the recipe for you. There we are. So you can see on the recipe there what we're going to be doing, what Millie's up to at the moment is she's up to number one. She's peeling and chopping and boiling the potatoes. We'll then drain and mash those potatoes. We'll add those in with 180 grams of self-raising flour or plain flour with a bit of baking powder. We'll add some, uh, we're going to add some marge. We're going to mix all of that together um, uh, so we can do it. So, all right, so that's what we're going to be doing to, to with our potato scones to start with. And they will be a beautiful potato scones. Plus, we're managing to get some vegetables into what would normally be, um, um, it, could be it could be a sweet one. In fact, you can add a little bit of sugar in this if you really wanted to. Um, but don't forget, when we're talking about um, uh, these scones here, these potato scones, they're only scone when you've eaten them. Uh, potato scones, um, when, we, don't forget this, we're in Devon at the moment, so I'm talking to you from Devon in the UK. Uh, we have a particular way of putting the uh, jam and cream on, as you may or may not be aware, um, the Cornish have another way. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be controversial and say I'm obviously, uh, I'm in Devon and I prefer the Devon way, that's personally, um, and <laughs> and and which, which, which is the cream and then the jam, not the jam and then the cream, which is the way the Cornish types do it. Anyway, um, with the scones there, that's the recipe there. I'm just going to hop, skip and jump back, uh, back to us now. Let's go back to um, us and say where we're up to. I think Millie's just done that one. Um, okay, uh, she has, she has. Um, you can see there, one potato, nicely, uh, nicely done. Now we need to chop that one. Is that potato really long and thin? Um, ish, yeah. Not, uh, I think we can make it longer and thinner. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use two cuts. So we've got the bridge and we've got the claw. Remember when you're using a claw, you put your thumb right back, your fingers over the top so we can't see that thumb. We don't want that thumb chopped off. OK, now we're going to start with, let's get that down on the board so you can see this one. Um, we're going to start with a bridge. So um, Millie's going to form a bridge between her thumb and four fingers like that. Perfect. And then she's going to put the knife through the middle of that and so slice backwards and forwards between the middle of that one. Uh, we do need to get breadcrumbs. Don't worry, we'll just keep that one going. Don't worry about the beeping. That's just our timer for the breadcrumbs there. Don't you need to worry. Millie's just going to run and do that one. I'll finish this one off then. So um, bridge again, just like Millie did there. Bridge. Um, OK, just put it in there for another five minutes. And so I'm just going to bridge that one down to it, and I'm going to keep bridging it down and keep bridging it down. Just finishing off what Millie's done there. Um, so we've got long, thin pieces of potato. Can you see that? Almost like chips now. Um, the smaller you make them, the quicker they'll cook. OK, so we're doing this one. Uh, like that. OK, so we've now got those ones in nice, long, thin pieces. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my claw. So that's the thumb right back. Really important. I'm going to say it again, thumb right back, fingers over the top. And then I'm going to move it back and I'm going to chop them down into small pieces. Let's do the same. I'm going to be fancy now. I'm going to try and do a couple at the same time here. Don't worry. Just do what you can at a time. And there we go. See all those nice pieces of chunk, chunks of potato? Do you want to go, Millie? There we yeah. go. You can have a go now. Um, so um, we're just chopping those up really thinly. Uh, any more questions? Yes, another question. Can we put these in the microwave instead of boiling some water? Yes, you can. OK, so um, what you can do is once you chop these up really, really small, um, put them into a bowl, um, obviously uh, not a, a metal bowl, but into a plastic or glass bowl. Put them into there with some boiling water, just covering them over. Put them in the microwave for um, five, ten minutes. Um, that will do the same trick. Obviously, it depends on how many potatoes you've done, what size potatoes you've got into there. But what if you've got a large potato, ideally, with that one? Um, you're going to get that one into a bowl and you can do it in the microwave instead of boiling it on the hob. We're going to boil them on the hob traditional way, but yes, you could do it either way either. Um, any more questions there while we're doing this one? Let's have a look. Got some more questions coming in. Um, uh, is it OK if I don't make the chocolate cake only because uh, we've had chocolate cake yesterday? <laughs> um, fabulous. And so we're making chocolate cake again. Um, fabulous. No, if th this is a challenge for you. You make you make what you can for your VE day recipes here. So um, if you want to make one recipe today and then move on to the other one later in the week, 
That's fine. That's fine. I, I don't mind when you make these ones. So the idea is, is I think you've got a selection of party foods then for uh, May the 8th, Friday, May the 8th, um, which is as a say V day. Um, also happens to be your cousin Charlotte's birthday as well, doesn't it? Um, there we go. Um, so VE day there um, on Friday. Now what Millie's done, if you can oh, just see what she's doing there, she's got a nice pan there. Um, she's got the pan there with the potatoes. Potatoes going into the pan. Um, very well done. She's going to cover that with a bit of boiling water and going to go and put that on the hob. Um, I will go and watch you do that one, I suppose. Um, and then we'll come back back over here and we'll carry on with everything else. Right. So um, here we go. So what Millie's going to do now is she's just going to, uh, she's got, we're, we're moving back. You see all our flags in the background there, isn't it good? Um, um, so we are just going to, there we go. Oh, we're back over at the hob here. Um, here's Millie on the hob. So she's just got the, the. there we go. That's the one. Um, and then we're going to pull that. We've got some kettle there. We pour boiling water into the pan. So, um, uh, for those who were watching this live, obviously it's year, year seven. Um, Millie's also in year seven as well. Um, there we go. Fab, is that all covered up? Fabulous. Yeah. Yep. Put that one on a uh, medium heat then. All right. It's gone off a little bit. There we go. Those big flames. All right. And we'll leave that one be for a minute um, and we'll come back over and get on with everything else. That's just going to stew off for 10 minutes. How are our, um, how are our toasty breadcrumbs looking? Um, yeah, nearly done. OK. All right. We'll just go and click those ones in a minute. All right. So we have got started two recipes now. So we have got the uh, our, our wartime recipe for our scones, potato scones. Potatoes are on the go. We've got our uncooked, uh, uncooked chocolate cake, and that's just uh, as I said, toasted. Uh, we're getting all the nicely toasted um, piece of breadcrumbs in there for that one too. All right, uh, let's uh, let's have a look. We had um, three recipes, so um, we while we wait for those, let's get on with our third recipe. Now, our third recipe is our carrot cookies. Now, the carrot cookies were absolutely delicious yesterday. I can truly say really lovely on those ones so we're going to work through our carrot cookies recipe now while we wait for those two things to just finish themselves off we'll go and collect them in a minute but we're just going to work with those ones so we're going to need ourselves a large mixing bowl and we're going to need a wooden spoon for this one a um, very simple re quick recipe for this one so um for this one we need 25 grams of uh marge and uh, we're gonna there we go just so we'll grab that one from the fridge there um we've got 25 grams of marge and 50 grams of sugar going to be going into here we're going to be creaming the two together and we're going to be using a little bit of um, an amazing amazing stuff to add our vanilla um now if you can't get hold of your vanilla oh there we go just getting that one um if we can't get hold of it um that's fine um, but i'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're using right more questions is it okay if i make the carrot cookies and potato scones later um that's absolutely fine you do it when you want to um, um you can make this challenge this challenge for you to make these wartime recipes just make it where you want to but more questions coming in um i'm way behind <laughs> what have you done so far so we've done two things so far we the first thing is we've got the um we've got the potato which is boiling um up so we chopped up the potato we peeled and chopped the potato and it's boiling in water okay now if you've uh, if you haven't got another question just come in i haven't got potatoes Will mashed potato do? Yeah, mashed potato will work in this. Um, absolutely. Um, you can make up some mashed potato, um, some like packaged ma mashed potato, um, powdered mashed potato. So you could use that. So we just got potato on the boil. Um, we, you could put it into the microwave if you wanted to. The second thing we've done is we've got breadcrumbs in uh, just toasting on a on a tray in the oven, just so because they weren't they weren't quite stale enough. Um, so we're a bit too fresh. But if you've got stale breadcrumbs, you don't need to do that. So that's the two things we've done so already. We've got the first step done for our potato uh, scones. We've got the first step done for our chocolate uh, cake. OK, um, so what we're going to make now from the very beginning is we're going to show you how quickly it is to make these cookies. And they are really lovely cookies to make as well. Sounds odd, but really good cookies. So large bowl, wooden spoon. Yeah. OK, um, we're going to be putting 25 grams of marge. So measure yourself out 25 grams of marge there into a little bowl of butter, marge, the like. That's fine. Now, the great thing is if you've got um, a packet of butter or baking fat, uh, which is what we're using today, um, that's fine. Um, into the ghost. There we go, Millie. 
Um, so and it's actually got the markings actually on the outside there, which is kind of useful along the top there to weigh those out. So um, 25 grams of butter is in there. Now in with the 25 grams of butter, we're going to be putting in there uh, 50 grams of sugar. OK, so is that going to go in there as well? Pour that one in, Millie. So we've got butter and sugar into this one. Now I'll just quickly go back to the recipe so you can see what we're doing on there. Um, so uh, here we go. So we're on the carrot cakes. Let me just put that one up so you see what we're doing. There we go. Oops. All right. So you can see from the recipe there, what Millie's just done is she's got 25 grams of butter there, or marge, or baking fat, or whatever fat you have to hand. Into that, she's put her 50 grams of sugar, and that's in a big mixing bowl. We're going to add some vanilla into that, and we're going to beat it all together. And that is so simple. Once we've beaten it all together, we'll add a bit of grated carrot. If you want to put in there any raisins, uh, nuts, um, that works really, really nicely. Um, so raisins and nuts go really nicely into this one and we can do that one and get that one ready to go as well. And then once we've done that, we put the whole lot together, we put it onto a baking tray, we get it out and it will taste absolutely delicious. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to have a go at doing all of that. So there's going to be a bit more grating to go on and uh, a bit more mixing to go on for you there. Uh, right, just going to get this one, uh, there we go. Right, you got your ingredients there, Millie? No. Just check the pan there, just check if it's boiling away, just give it a little stir while we get back to everybody here. Are you okay? Is that okay? Is it boiling up, Millie? Okay, we'll give it for 10 minutes. That's okay. As long as the water's still in there. Right, uh, go back to me then. All right, here we go. Hello, everybody. You're back to me now. All right, so what we've got here is we've got our butter and sugar, and the next thing we need to add in there is our vanilla. Now, um, if you uh, can't, if you can get it, this is the best stuff in the world and they deliver this all around the world and it's local to us here in Devon. It's Little Pod. OK, Little Pod is the company. They um, they're really, really lovely. They make a really delicious paste and it's it's a really nice one. Each tube here has actually got 20 vanilla pods in each one. Seeds and everything. OK, and it's really, really lovely stuff. Responsibly sourced. Um, proper there, responsibly sourced Madagascan vanilla here. Um, the best stuff you can get. Now we're going to put in a, uh, a teaspoon of this stuff. It is just, oh, it's beautiful. Now it's really important that you use real vanilla wherever you can, if you can get hold of it. Um, like I say, this is local Devon, they're still sending it out. If you can go online, you can get that one at the moment and it's um, you still get it delivered to your house. Um, but if you can't get hold of this stuff, then um, you want to be at least using something that's got real vanilla in it, like an extract. You don't want to be using uh, flavorings if you can. Obviously, we would have had to in the war, but um, flavorings um, are not a good thing. They're made from a petrochemical, and we don't want to be putting petrochemicals in our into our food. We want to be trying to put the real stuff. And so this is it. This is literally um, the whole vanilla pod there. I'm going to be pouring that in. You might be able to see that one on the camera. And you, hopefully you can see those gorgeous seeds as well there. Look at that. Now we need to be supporting the farmers out there to get this stuff, to get vanilla is really hard work. Now you don't, you don't get vanilla farms. To get vanilla, um, to farm the vanilla that we eat, okay, um, it grows, the vanilla plant, it grows up the side, in the rainforest, up the side of trees, okay, all over the trees. People have to go into the bit forest, go and collect this, they have to go and grab these huge vines off the um, trees and they have to pull them down by hand and then actually farm them that way. It's a huge time consuming pro project to actually be doing, but we want to support these local farmers out there who are providing us with food right across the world and say this is one way of doing it. So um, really lovely stuff here, highly recommend it if you can get hold of it. Local company to us in Devon, they import the vanilla straight into us here, um, into, uh, it is a place up by Exeter Airport, it comes straight into us and um, it gets produced and goes straight out, it's beautiful. Have I talked too much about vanilla? Yes. Okay, I'm going to stop a minute. Um, you can have a look into that yourself. So back to the recipe. We've got butter, we've got sugar. We've got... Mm, oh, mm, it's so nice though. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we're going we're gonna to mash that up. Go on then, cream it all together. So real simple now. We're going to cream the vanilla, the butter, the sugar together. Now it might not seem like a lot here, but you'll be able to get about eight to ten cookies out of this. So um, don't worry about that. It's quite a, um, a liquidy uh, carrot mix when you put it in. Again, don't worry about that. That's still going to work nicely. So we, we mashed it all up there. 
she's mashing it, mashing it. And what it should look like when it's done, it should look like um, sort of like a, a soggy ice cream. Um, that's what that's what it should look like. So best thing, little tip here: if you brush, put the brush back of the spoon. Nah, that's the one. The back of the spoon against the bowl as you're doing it. So I'm just going to show you on the bowl. So if you put the back the back of the spoon against the bowl as we're doing this one. Um, oh yeah, that's a good idea. We can change the lighting here so we can see it, see, see everything a bit better. Um, oh, that's a bit too dark. That one. There we go. Um, so we're just going to bash that against the bowl. Here we go. And we're just going to cream that one together. Do you want to carry on, Millie? Oh, she's making it out. She's gone straight on to the next step. OK, so um, once we have done this one, we need to we can add all, all our fancy stuff together into this one. So we're going to max it, mix into this one um, uh, the carrot, but also some fancy um, spices. So um, while I'm doing this, do you want to do the next bit, Millie? The old peeling again. She likes peeling. So we're going to peel a carrot. So we're looking at a medium sized carrot. Can you hold that up to the camera for everybody. Medium sized carrot. Peel it down. Be careful again. Be careful when you're peeling because you don't want to be chopping fingers. So we've done that. Um, to peel that one away. So Millie's just peeling that one away. She's making sure she doesn't peel her fingers off. I am but, um, at the moment getting the butter and the sugar creamed together so they're combined. Um, there we go. Creaming the butter and the sugar together so they're beautifully combined. All right. Wonderful. Um, OK, my butter and my sugar is now creaming together. We are, we are, as you can see, if you, if you look back at the recipe card there, um, we're actually halfway through this cookie recipe already. See how quick and easy it is. Butter, sugar, vanilla. Um, really lovely and proper vanilla. Um, that's it. Now we're supporting those local farmers out there, responsibly sourced vanilla. Um, and remember, vanilla isn't um, vanilla isn't um, yellow, which is a bit of an odd one. When you look at the vanilla in flame, it's, it's black. It's a black. It's got black seeds in it. And you, just, you get a vanilla um, pod and scrape down the middle side. It's like um, a gooey black gum inside it. Um, it's yummy um, with all the seeds in it. And that's that's what you uh, should be. It's like a really dark brown, blacky colour. Um, OK, so my butter and sugar is all creamed together. But uh, your carrot is all done. Yeah. All right, cheese grater time. We're going to be doing a lot of this cheese grater today. Um, um, finest possible, I would say. Probably like that one. Actually, that one. That one would be good. Um, we're going to do that one. Be careful. Don't forget cheese graters and lots of teeny tiny knives as well. So don't be grating fingernails or fingers into this one. OK, I'm just going to be getting the carrot in there. So I've got the butter, the sugar. We've got, now I've got the carrot going into this one as well. Let me just check more questions and queries down the side of the, from, the, from the class here as we're going along. Um, I'm way behind. Don't worry about that. How many grams of margin sugar? Right. Good idea. Didn't say that one. 25 grams of uh, butter, 50 grams of sugar. OK, one to the half the other. OK, so 25 grams of marge, marge or butter, 50 grams of sugar. Thank you for asking that one. Um, I've done the margarine and the sugar. What's next? So um, after you put your 25 grams of marge and your 50 grams of sugar, your teaspoon of vanilla, and then we cream it all together, which is what I was doing, while Millie was grating, is grating a um, peeled carrot. OK, one peeled carrot in there. She did a brilliant job in there. It's all going in there really lovely. It's quite a soggy mix. It might it might seem odd, like I say, at the moment, you might be thinking, I'm not going to get eight cookies out of this. Y you will. Trust me on this one. Uh, sorry, ten. ten. Between eight and ten. I, I'm not sure how many we ate, uh, which came straight out of the oven, but we'll have a look at the show you those. They are really, really yummy. Right, whilst doing that, we'll talk about spices. You don't have to put any spices into your biscuit. And you might think, oh, that sounds a bit odd. You're going to get loads of natural sweetness from the carrot going into here, but some spices into it look really good as well. So I've got two spices here. I have got nutmeg and I've got cinnamon. So ooh, can you see on the screen there? Nutmeg and cinnamon. So I've got two, two different spices in there. Now I've got ground nutmeg and ground cinnamon. If you've not got that and you've got the dried whole cinnamon and then you want to crush that one up and put a bit in there, that's good. Um, same with nutmeg. If you've got a little nut and you need to use a little nut grater, we've got a little nut grater. Uh, there's a little nutmeg grater in there, teeny tiny grater. Um, you can grate some nutmeg into there, but otherwise I'm just going to put a teaspoon. While Millie's doing that, I'm going to put some spices into there in with our carrot. So I'm going to be putting, um, here we go, a little bit of nutmeg. I'm going to put a little bit of nutmeg there. So about half a teaspoon of nutmeg. And I'm going to put a whole teaspoon of cinnamon into this one. Oh, I like my cinnamon. Uh, anyone else like cinnamon out there? Let's have a look. Oh, I love cinnamon. Cinnamon in there. Oh, it smells of Christmas. Mm. It's very strong. It is very strong. Yeah, it is very strong. Be careful with that one. So we got cinnamon, nutmeg going in with our carrot. 
Um, now, I like to try and get five a day into our, into our, are you doing all right? It's good yes. exercise. This is Joe Wicks bit. We don't need Joe Wicks. We've got uh, Mr. Man here and he's getting it all your workouts for you today. Um, all right. So as well as that, I'm going to put in there some fruit. If you've got some fruits and nuts, again, I'm just going to put a little bit of fruit in there. We'll put some raisins in there as well. Use up what we've got at home in our lockdown larder. You might have fruits and nuts and spices that you want to put into there. That's good. Um, let me get some, look at some more questions. Um, nope, that's it. Everyone seems to be up okay at the moment. So we're at the stage now where we've got our oh, 25 grams of butter in there, 50 grams of sugar in there, one teaspoon of vanilla in there. That's all being creamed together. Millie is working very, 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 very hard <laughs> at getting our whole carrot grated into there. I've added while she was doing that, the easy job, I put in there a teaspoon of nutmeg, uh, sorry, a half teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of cinnamons in there as well. I put in a, a half a handful, handful of raisins in there, okay? Um, so if you've got any fruits or nuts you want to put in there, any dried fruits in there, anything you might have in your lockdown larder you want to put in there, that's what, the, that was what happened in the wartime recipes. You use up these things. Now, carrots. Um, during the war, there was a huge propaganda uh, thing, with propaganda being the trying to convince people about things during the war. From our government, trying to get people to uh, saying that, you know, you need to eat more carrots and, and they can see in the dark. Um, actually, it wasn't, there was some truth in it. So carrots are absolutely crammed back pack full of uh, vitamin A, okay, which is really good for your retina, which means you're not going to just see better in the night, but you actually see better during the day as well. Um, so it does, it's not, it, there is some truth in it. But why did they do it at the time? Well, they were saying the reason why, um, they, were, they were saying about our pilots, our pilots were flying over Europe. They were saying, oh, they can see in the dark because of the amount of carrots they've been eating. Because what they were trying to do during the war is they were trying to keep secret about this little old new thing that we had called radar. And they didn't want people to know quite so much about the radar. So they would say, well, you can see in the dark, carrots, we're eating lots of carrots. That's why, that's why you can see in the dark, um, um, our, our pilots are great at flying their aircraft. But they just wanted to keep it secret as long as we could about radar. Um, so there we are, a bit of wartime, wartime bits in there as well. We've got wartime, are you okay? Do you want to go and check the potato? Yeah. Go and check the potato, go and check the breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs will be done now, so we do switch those off. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Um, so breadcrumbs are done, if you've done that. Potatoes should be done at this point as well for your other two recipes. How are they doing, Millie? Really? breadcrumbs are definitely done. Okay, breadcrumbs are done, brilliant. Potatoes boiling away. Potatoes boiling away. This is why I need a little sous chef in my kitchen. This is great. Bubbling loads. Do you want to stick a fork in them and just see if it falls off, Millie? Yeah. See if they're soft enough. Okay. So I've nearly finished my carrot. Going into my carrot, um, the cookies. Okay. I'm going to be. I'm going to be okay to eat these carrot cookies after this. I've got a lot of exercise here. I'm nearly done. Loads in there. Now I say. Now you probably see that you can get loads of cookies out of this now. Yep, falling off, yeah. soft, good. Okay, just turn the heat off, let them rest in the water, and we'll come back over to those in a minute. Yeah. All right, um, you might just want to shut the oven there, and uh, take those just uh, through the door there. The breadcrumbs, take them through the door there. Yeah. Right. There we go. Before we set the... Uh... Yeah. There we go. Brilliant, Millie's just getting these out of the oven. Yeah, just take them through there if you wouldn't mind and put them out. Yeah, just cool down. Yeah, put them on the table and there's a, there's a put them there and the, the key over there. Right. Uh, yeah, that's good. Leave them on the tray and open the window, that's a good idea. I'm just going to get our toasted crumbs uh, if you're wondering what we're doing there. Um, so, Millie's just got the toasted uh, stale bread out and she's putting them cooling down. So, I'm just going to put that by the window there cool them down before we use those for our next recipe. Yeah, we're nice and that's it. Okay, and so we can do that. Right, carrots in there, spices in there, butter in there. Everything is ready to go. Um, we are nearly ready there. So we've got that one in there. We've got spices, carrots. There. Right, do you want to start mixing that through? Mash that one through. Yeah. And then we're going to add some uh, raisin, raisin flour. How much self-raising flour are we adding? 60 grams. 60 grams of self-raising flour. So once you've got your carrot, 
and your fruit and your nuts in there, 60 grams is in there. So um, I'll mash these one up. If you can just have a look, I'm going to show you, just move the camera down so you can see. I'm mashing it up. Do you want to put the flour in there, Millie? So 60 grams of flour is self-raising flour is going in there. If you've only got plain flour, that's fine. Put plain flour in there and um, a little bit of baking powder, and okay, a little pinch of baking powder, about half a teaspoon of baking powder in there. And again, this might seem like an odd mix. It's not, you might think this is never going to come together. Just keep stirring it until everything is combined. OK, just keep stirring all of that up like I'm doing now so we get all of that combined. And then all we're going to do then is we're going to be putting in one. Um, I just put that one in there, holding it all in. We have one tablespoon of water. Now, at the moment, you're probably thinking well, that's about right for a cookie mix. But the, what, that's going to make it too wet. The one tablespoon of water, OK, is good. We don't need to. We've already got some plain though, so we just get, if you want to get a tablespoon of water, that's fine. In the jug. Okay. All right, so that is our cookie mix. We're just going to add a little bit of water. Just one tablespoon. There we go. I'm going to add that one in there. Here we go. Uh, well done, Millie. Got the water. Just going to add one tablespoon of water to that. Um, uh, you might think, why do we need to do that? It's going to make it too wet. Um, it is, but we're going to be showing you how to do this one onto the tray. So we need a, um, a tray there. Do you want to get us a tray? We'll get these cookies in the oven. Yeah. Carrot cookies nearly done. Let me just do a recap while we get that sorted out. We get back the recipe back on the board for you. So you where we're up to, what we've been doing. OK, so setting that one lively now. OK, on the board there, you can see um, what we've got going on there is we have just gone through the whole recipe really quickly. Um, We've mixed everything together from number six onwards. We've got a little self-raising flour in there, and if you're using plain flour and baking powder, you can do that one. Um, we've folded the flour into there, any spices, optional ones there, like I say, putting those ones in, added a tablespoon of water. Now we're gonna drop small spoonfuls. It's gonna seem like a really wet mix, um, but we're gonna drop small spoonfuls, some little teaspoons uh, into this one. I'm gonna show you how we can do that one. Um, okay, so let's go back to ourselves. All right, uh, let's see if any more questions. We've got more questions coming down. Uh, yes, can we have just use cinnamon? Yes, you can. I've done the mashed potato. What next? So somebody's already ahead of me on the mashed potato. Right, we are going to come straight to the mashed potato in a moment. I'm just going to get these cookies in the oven so we can eat those ones. Um, so how are we going to put these cookies in the oven? We're going to do something called quinelle. Oh, it's a fancy, fancy term. Let me show you what we're going to do. We've got our mix here. We're going to get you straight into the oven as quick as we can. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get it in one teaspoon. I'm going to scrape it off with a second teaspoon. I'm going to scrape it off that one with a second teaspoon. And I'm doing it on the sides now. Can you see what I'm doing there? I'm just turning it. And as I turn it, it makes a nice circle. And I'm going to put that circle onto my tray. OK, and then I'm going to give it a little push down into a circle there. So that is my cookie. I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to do what's what we call Quinelli. I'm just going to turn it from one spoon to the other. If you did it in your fingers, it'd be too wet. But I'm just going to turn that one into there. OK, and I'm going to put that one back onto the tray again and I'm going to give it a little squash down into the tray. Now give them some room to spread because they will spread. OK, so give them a couple of centimetres between each one. All right, um, we'll do the same again. So I'm just going to keep doing this little spoons like that and you're going to drop them onto your tray now they might not look like cookies at the moment they don't really but trust me when these bake off they'll look like a normal cookie that you've made okay so here we go so here we go with that one i'm just going to put another one on there I think I've got made too many cookies Mick, for this one we might we're gonna have lots of cookies to eat today might have to go and give some around to the neighbors Drop some on the doorstep wall, doorsteps for them, which is good. That's what all of but all of this uh, great stuff that's coming out of these lockdown times. This is where we're helping each other out where, around where you live, um, looking after everybody. OK, so we're in that one on there and then. I can shut that down if you want to. OK. Not me, I just the, 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 the um, it's just trying to sort out the curtain there. There we go. I'll do that one, I'll do that one. All right, so you can see the final one there. I'm just going to get that one. Right. Now, why am I doing it like this? And why why do I, am I so, so important that they're all the same size? The reason it's so important that we get the same number on there, you see what I'm doing there, is that we don't want one to be too big, one to be too small. 
And then, um, so we might have a couple too big, a couple too small. Then what we'll mean is some will be undercooked, some will be overcooked, and you're only going to actually have to eat a couple, okay? So um, I've got those ones in. We've got loads of mix left, but let's go and get those ones in the oven. Minnie, do you want to go and whack yeah. those ones in the oven? Um, how long do they need to go in the oven for, Minnie? Um, Can you remember? They need to go into, uh, so there we are. Um, we need to get those ones into the oven. We're going to put those in the oven at 200 degrees, gas mark six, and we're putting those in for 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll put ours in probably for 10 minutes, okay? So 10 minutes on the timer, Millie. Um, that is our carrots done. Boom, as one of my friends would say, um, who also works in food. Um, and he's, he's in the forces as well, the Royal Marines, Michael Beaton. Um, 10 minutes for those ones. Okay, so we've done our uh, carrot cakes. Um, now, someone says they've done the mashed potato. Let's get on with this. Let's get our mashed potato ready. Um, so we're going to go, uh, how much baking powder? Just a pinch, just half a teaspoon, someone said for that one. Um, we're going to move straight on to uh, the scones and then we'll get into our cake, okay? So the scones, really nice to eat and easy one to do with this one. We're going to go back over to where Millie was, um, back over to the hob now where our potatoes were. I'm going to quickly show you how to do those ones and then we'll put them all the scones. We'll do the scones, they're nearly ready. We'll get those ones done and then we will finish off with our chocolate cake, which is so easy. It's unbelievable. Um, right. See there, big Union Jack. There we are on the back there. We're going to do our big BB day uh, today. Um, that's why we've got the, v the Union Jack up there. Right. Potatoes cooked. Yeah. Right. So we need to get a, what we call a colander. It's like a sieve, but it's got much bigger holes in it. Um, um, we've got one of those. and you just get one of those out for you. So you can see. So that's the one. Um, so uh, show the screen, show everyone what colander looks like. We've got a massive colander here. Um, the safest way to do this one with your vegetables is put the colander into the sink. There we are, Millie, put the colander into the sink. So, yeah, thank you, turn the camera around. Um, so we've got the colander now into the sink and then we bring the, the boiling water to the colander and we pour that into the sink, okay? So we're gonna do that one now. Um, so we're gonna get the, that's it, oven gloves, the room for uh, health and safety there. So we're gonna get that. Pour that one into. And hopefully you can see that one. That's going into the colander. Is that all good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Put, then we're going to put the potatoes yeah. back in the pan. Oh. Okay. So the potato, let's put that in the pan back in the bottom and pour the from what's in there back into there. Nice and simple. Now that way you're not going to end up burning yourself. Okay. So put the colander in the sink. Pour it through. Once you pour all the hot water away. You can then put what's in the colander back into yeah. your pan. <laughs> there we go. Right, now, put your pan. Yeah. Let's have a look at that pan. No hot water is going to burn yourself, is there now? No. So, potato masher. We've got just a traditional potato masher. You might have a machine that does that. If you've got a machine, that's brilliant, but we just got to, uh, we're going to get Millie to work today. Um, so we just got her with the potato masher there. We're going to mash up all those potatoes that are going to go in. Other root vegetables will be absolutely fine for this one. So if you've got other root vegetables you want to use, you go for it. Um, we're going to mash these ones in. We're going to do it all mashed. Yeah. We'll do a bit more mashing. Go on, you can do another bit more mashing. And then we'll take it back over. We'll go and finish off with the scones. So easy today. Loads going on today with this one. You just carry on. You carry on doing the teaching for a minute there. Right, let me have a look. See, we've got any more messages coming in down the side here. Uh, ah, someone wants to know what the box is. Uh, yes, you may have spotted in the background here. I've got. I love little pods. Look at this. Uh, anyway, uh, right. Uh, okay, so we all mashed up. Mashed up? Yeah. Fabulous. All right, let's go move over here. There was a thing yesterday which was quite interesting on the news about what does your what's your your books say about yourself? You can see all my recipe books over there. Lots of Jamie Oliver. Um, who have we got there? Of River, lots of River Cottage ones. A lot of Bake Off ones. Lots of by Mary Berry. Um, we've got uh, what other books have we got up here? Someone was saying yesterday we just did, um, we've got some oh, Michael Caine's brilliant chef local to us down here in Devon. Um, he's really good. Um, um, we got some pinch non ones which are good books there. Um, again. See, I do like, do like more vanilla. Um, uh, we've got lots of good, but Gordon Ramsay books up there. Someone was saying yesterday, what else we got there? Anyway, let's get back. Um, let's get back over here. Um, right. Um, back to ourselves here. We're ready to go with our scones. Let me quickly show you the scone recipe up on the board so you can see that one. Which show you, and I'll talk you through where we're up to. OK, so scone recipe. Potato scones. We've peeled and chopped our potatoes. Oh, let me just get on the board so it's not on the board yet. Let me push that one on there for you. I thought it was on there, but... 
Uh, let me send that one to you. There we go. And by magic, there it is. So you can see on the recipe there, we've peeled and chopped our potato, that's in there. We've drained it, we've mashed it, that's ready to go. Now in with this one, we're gonna be putting in 180 grams of self-raising flour and 30 grams of butter. Um, so we've got, uh, we're just gonna get those ones for you. So 30 grams of butter is gonna go in there. We're also gonna be putting a little pinch, uh, there we get a little pinch of baking powder. Um, and that's gonna go into there as well. And we're gonna be rubbing this whole lot together, getting it all together, and it's gonna be absolutely wonderful, all right? So um, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna go with this, get the self-raising flour and the marge. Don't put that in the potato just yet. Just have potato on the side, don't mix it just yet. You're gonna get your 180 grams of flour, your 30 grams of marge. And normally that'd be a lot more fat in there, but we're gonna be using the potato instead. And we're going to be putting the baking powder in there and then we'll put the potato in at the very last minute okay uh, and we'll, we'll add the mashed potato until it's really creamy we might add a little bit of milk into this one if we want to and we'll put that one together and we'll make these ones into some lovely um, lovely lovely yeah okay yeah all right so i think we're nearly ready now so here we go um let's go back to ourselves is everyone happy with that recipe hopefully everybody is and we'll get you back up onto the screen so you can see where we're up to. This is wartime recipe number two coming up. Okay, so wartime recipe number two. Okay, is everybody ready for wartime recipe number two? Number two, number two. Uh, okay, so we have our bowl. That was our bowl for our making our scones. Um, into that bowl, we're going to be putting into there our 180 grams of there we are, self raising flour. Yeah, you can see you. Yeah, in it goes, Millie. Fabulous. Um, and then in with that 180 grams, we're going to be putting our 30 grams of fat. Fat. <laughs> See all that? Yeah. Okay, 30 grams of fat into there as well. Um, so that's all gone into our bowl here. Now in with the bowl there, we're going to need a big wooden spoon. Another one just there, we'll grab that wooden spoon. Oh, so it's inside it's we left it over there. Um, so uh, in with that, we're going to be, um, we don't need that one actually. We just, 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 just use your fingers, use your fingers. Um, that'd be fine. Um, so um, we've got that one in there. We'll put the baking powder in there first. Baking powder, baking powder. Yeah. Bam, bam. Do the baker's pinch. Thirty grams, yeah. No, it's not thirty grams. Baker's pinch. Teaspoon. Um, so we're using a teaspoon. I mean, do you use a teaspoon or a pinch? A teaspoon. All right. Level teaspoon. Level teaspoon of baking powder in there. So we just got some. Oh, there you go. There we are. Baking powder in there. We're just gonna put a level teaspoon of baking powder in there. Fabulous. Um, so now we, what we need to do is we're going to rub it in. Now do you remember how we do this with normally when we do pastries and we rub it in? So um, what does, happens when we rub it in, Millie? Just yeah, very fingers. Okay, you, well, you're going to be using the very tip of your fingers. You carry on doing that one then. So what we're going to do is we're going to rub the fat into the flour, okay? Um, so we're going to just rub the fat into the flour. So lifting and tickling using the very ends of our fingers. We're using the pinchy ends of our fingers here. Yeah? And we're going to lift and tickle that fat all around the flour. We're going to crumble it all in. We're going to rub it all in. If you were making a crumble, this might be something you might be doing with it like in a similar sort of fashion. So you lift and tickle, lift and tickle. And each time you're lifting and tickling, you get a little bit of air in it. You're breaking down the butter in. So it's really, really tiny, tiny, small going into the flour. Okay. Um, and we're just rubbing that mixture in together so the butter just disappears. By magic. Um, okay, we're going to get that one into there. We're going to be rubbing it in. It's all rubbed in, nearly rubbed in, nearly rubbed in. We're, we're nearly there, everybody. Um, um, and then once we've done that rubbed in, rubbing in, once we've got all that in there, so we've got the flour, we've got 180 grams worth of flour, we've got 30 grams worth of but, um, butter, margarine, baking fat um, rubbed into that one. Um, and then we're going to be putting in, we put the baking powder in there as well. Then we're going to put the potatoes in, the mashed potato goes into that one. Um, and we'll cream that into a lovely dough. We might add a little bit of milk if we want to um, into the mashed potato and into there as well. Is it all crumbled? Yeah. Nearly, uh, little tip here, if you want to know whether it's got to the top, we give it, we give, it we give a little bowl, a little tap on the work surface. So we just give it a little tap on the work surface. And the bigger lumps should come to the top. So you can see how many big lumps come to the top. So that's a little tip there for you. Now, during the war, what would have happened when you were making, putting butter and flour together for pastries and things if you couldn't get hold of fats? Well, they did some really odd things, some things which I wouldn't recommend. They would actually put, um, they would put glycerine in, which is like a petrochemical in, um, used, used for industry. They would put those sort of things in, odd mixtures of things. We well, don't want to be putting glycerine into food, uh, the, like uh, the liquid glycerine and all sorts of weird petrol things and all sorts of Lots of things to try and get food, mock foods in there. Not going to do that. We're just going to be carrying on what we're doing here. Um, okay, how are we doing? Good. 
Right, OK, um, we have nearly got there. I'm, I'm whittering on and I'm talking rubbish. Um, so let's uh, let's let's get our potato in there. Where's the potato? Yeah. Ah, potato, right, potato into there. So we're going to add the mashed potato until it's light and creamy. So in there goes. She's scooping the mashed potato. Is it really hot? Is it really hot? <laughs> in it goes. Hopefully it's warm enough. Yeah, you can touch that one now. So we're going to get that one mixed in. We've got the mashed potato being mixed in. In it goes. She's throwing the mashed potato in here, ready for your party on Friday, ready for your lockdown ho at home VE day parties. You can have your lovely scones there. Has it all come out yet? Yeah. Nearly. All right. Now. Yeah. Fabulous. Now we go and put that saucepan away and go grab that with a spoon now. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we've now got in there our flour, baking powder. Oh, you want to whack those off and see if they're done? Have a check, see if they're done. Yeah, they're done. They're done. Fabulous. So our carrot, uh, our carrot biscuits are done. And um, what we've got in here now is we. <laughs> she's going to get that one out while I do this one then. So um, I'm now going to mix the potato, the flour, the fat together into our bowl until it's lovely and creamy. We're going to need a lovely creamy dough mix. So I'm just going to mix all that together now. Um, just mix those through. Oh, they smell delicious, man. They, they look delicious as well. Fabulous. We got lovely looking and smelling delicious. Um, uh, biscuits there, fabulous. Oh, do you want to show the camera? Okay, yeah, go. On. Look at the biscuits, everybody. We got lovely biscuits. Brilliant. They smell. If you had smell of vision, they smell wonderful. Well done, Millie, on the side. Um, uh, and then uh, we're going to get these ones, the next ones in the oven. Um, okay, so if you want to bring that, Millie, if you wanted that tray there. Uh, oh, no, we've got a tray here. It's all right. Okay. Is that just take it on the, on the um, kitchen sink there or on the hob side of things? That'd be fine. Um, there we go. We just keep it on the drying rack over there. All right. So I've now got my well, Millie was getting those out of the oven. I've got my scone mix done. Hey, recipe number two, challenge, wartime recipe challenge number two done. Here we go. Here it is. It is a beautiful scone mix. It could do with being a bit creamier. So a little bit of milk in there, um, and we'll pour that one in as well. A little bit of milk in. Just to make it creamy. Now I don't know how much milk we're going to need to put in because I don't know how big your potato was. Um, so uh, depending on how big your potato was, will depend on how much you need to put into that one. So we're going to be getting ourselves a tray with some greaseproof paper on. Um, I mean, he's just doing that one now. Fabulous. We can use that whole greaseproof paper back. Put those crumbs in there. Yeah. So she's just got us another tray ready, lined with greaseproof paper, ready for our scones. All right. That is our scone mix. Done. OK, um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to roll this one out with a rolling. Oh, there's a tray ready. And this is going to get the rolling pin from the drawer, the middle drawer. Um, that's in there. Um, and we'll put some flour on there, flour on the work surface. Now, when you're rolling out, put some flour on your work surface. And then don't forget to put flour in your rolling pin as well. OK, so you need to make sure you've got, you've got some flour in your rolling pin, Minnie. No. You're going to put some flour in your rolling pin. There we go. Beautiful, it's lovely and warm, this scone mix. This is really nice. Um, shall I show everyone? I can't see it, can you? There we go. Um, so this is my scone mix there. You can see that's my, just taken it out there. It's a beautiful scone mix. We need to be making these about a centimetre large, okay? So about a centimetre, so about that big. Um, okay, so rolling it out flat. That's enough. Um, make it even all the way around, across. Wonderful. How quick was that? Brilliant. Wonderful. Uh, biscuit cutters, got some scone cutters. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've got some scone cutters. Now, I've got some uh, biscuit cutters. We're going to use those to cut the scones with. Can you see me there? So I'm going to use, uh, oh, there we go, back to me. Um, I've got the scone, scone cutters to, to, or biscuit cutters to cut my scones with. Hello. Um, but if you haven't got one of those, you can always use Make Do. We've got, we've got other things there. Oh, yeah, so you've got old tuna tins. That'll do. Cut them out that way. We can do it that way. Um, yeah, I think that one there. Yeah, perfect. Right, so Millie's just cutting those ones out onto the tray. There we go. They are lovely and warm. Onto the tray they go. Wonderful. Now, what am I going to do on the top of these? So what I'm going to do on the top of these is I'm just going to uh, brightly, I'm just going to brush them with a little bit of milk on the top just to make sure that they um, probably get, yeah, that's probably going to be OK. And then we'll do two, stack them down there. So potato scones done.
final one, Stu, then, is going to be our chocolate cake. And I said that they're all quite quite quick and easy, so we can get the whole lot done in a double period today, um, which is great. We've only just gone into period two, which is excellent. Um, so we've, uh, we've already gone, we're doing this really well today, shooting through these. these. Obviously, we've got to clean up, so it's going to take a little bit longer to clean up afterwards. We're making a bit of a mess in my, my kitchen today. Yeah, I can get a few more in there. And I'd say if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of sugar to these if you wanted to, but there's no need to. I think these would be lovely. Don't forget, you'll be putting your uh, cream and jam on. Not your jam and cream. Um, OK, there we go. Or <laughs> just jam. Yeah. There we go. OK, scones done. Uh, we're just going to get a brush. We can probably do one more out of that one, but we'll just get a brush. We're going to get a brush now um, for that one. So a little pastry brush from there. Um, so we have now got our scones. Ta -da! Done. Our wartime recipe scones. We've got the milk there. There we are, Millie. Milk. Yeah, onto the top. They're going to just, just going to brush each of those to the top there. So they've got a lovely golden glaze on them. Top? Yeah, just the top will be fine for each of those. There we are. That'll give them a lovely golden colour on them there. Ready for our party B day parties there. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Next one, here we go. And straight into the oven. OK, so we're going to be baking these in the oven. These are going to be baking for, again, 10, 15 minutes, depending on how large or small you like your scones to be. 10, 15 minutes. We'll get these in the for 10 minutes. Um, into the oven. They need to be preheated again, 200 degrees. So straight back into that oven that was on previously for your biscuits. These are going to be, again, 10 minutes in there again, cooking away. Oven gloves, don't forget when you get them in and out so you don't burn yourself. Um, and that's going into the next oven. Right. <laughs> We've done. Um, we've done the uh, carrot biscuits, uh, which taste absolutely amazing. Do you want to get them out? They're, they're, they're just in the utility there, you can see the, the plates in there. They're in the utility, there's a plate there. You can grab that one and put them on the plate there, bring that one through. Uh, uh, fabulous. All ready to go, Millie. Well done. Bring them through, bring them through. Uh, the biscuits are done. Scones are going to be done in 10 minutes. Let's get the cake done next. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's bring it through, Millie. No, 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 the other one, the, the long one, the long one that's already there, the blue, the blue one. All right, don't worry, we'll come back, come back and we'll do that one in a minute. Don't worry. No, I didn't say, I didn't say. Um, right, so let, let's, uh, let's get on with the next cake. Um, so we've done, we've done the scones, we've yeah. done the biscuits. Yeah. Which tastes amazing. Do you want to eat a biscuit now? I'm going to grab a biscuit, don't. She wants to eat a biscuit now, that's what she was asking me for. Um, they're yummy. She's gonna gonna eat one of our biscuits we just made. Brilliant. Um, okay, so next thing is we're gonna do is we're gonna do our we're gonna do our really 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 easy no cook chocolate cake. Okay. Um, we need to get over to the hob for this one. So let me show you how that recipe looks. I'm just gonna send you the recipe over to you so you've got that one so you can see it. Let's uh, push that one up. Okay, and sending live to you now. Three, two, one, and boom. Okay, wartime recipe number three. So this is wartime recipe number three. And with wartime recipe number three, we need to be uh, working a little bit on the hop. What we're going to do is we're going to be at 50 grams of marge weighed out. Um, and then in with the 50 grams of marge we've weighed out, we're going to be putting 50 grams of sugar. This is really a nice, easy one to remember. Um, and then we're going to be putting in uh, how many tablespoons of uh, syrup are we putting in, Millie? Two. Two tablespoons. So that's right. 50 grams. Uh, yeah, 50 grams of that. And we're going to put all of those into a saucepan. So um, if, if we, you say if you're washing up, just grab your saucepan, I would do for this one, and literally just weigh them straight into the saucepan, OK? Um, and it'll, it'll save you uh, a load of effort, all right? And just literally weigh them straight into it. So 50 grams of marge. 50 grams of sugar, two tablespoons of golden syrup. Then what we do next is we just heat gently until the margarine is melted, OK? And then we're going to remove it from the heat. Once it's removed from the heat, we stir in 50 grams of cocoa powder. See, no, again, really easy, nice one to remember, OK? So just 50 grams, 50 grams, 50 grams. Then we've got my old favourite. We're going to stir in there one teaspoon of uh, that amazing vanilla again. Um, and then we're all in the saucepan again. So this is a really lovely one to do in the saucepan. Then we put in our 125 grams of stale or crispy breadcrumbs, stale breadcrumbs. So, so you can bake stale pieces of bread in the oven until they go crispy, which is what we've done today. Um, we've got lovely crispy bread and uh, so we've got some wholemeal bread that's really gone crispy and crumbly. So we're going to use that inside it. We're going to stir in the breadcrumbs, mix it together, 
put it into a lined and greased uh, cake or tart tin, and then we're going to leave it in the fridge for an hour or so. OK, and that will firm up to a really hard, gorgeous cake. Um, so lovely and easy to, easy to do, lovely um, one to have a look at. Yep, um, so we've got everything on there. Let me just go back to us now and we'll talk you through this one. Um, we're going to go over to the hop, like I say, for this one. So, um, and back to me. Yes, you're back to me. Right, OK, so um, we are now going to do our final one. Nice, easy one. Last one to do. Couldn't be easier. Real simple one now. Before we do, I'm going to check and make sure we get any more comments, any concerns, any worries. What degrees are we putting the carrot cookies into? Really, what was the carrot cookies? What degrees was that? Uh, 200. 200 degrees. OK, so 200 degrees for the cookies. How many degrees was it for the scones? 200. 200 degrees. There we are. So that was a nice, easy one to remember. Right, let's get on with our, 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 our um, let's get on with our, our next one. I'm going to go to the hob. Right, please, you're going to join us in a minute. Um, OK, so we're going to go over to the hob now because we can do a lot of this on the hob and keep it really keep the washing up to a minimum on this so again i'm just going to um run over here um and see where, where the hob not run don't run through a kitchen um we're back in the kitchen and we're back over to the hob okay um we got our union jack for v day Rob bunting over there for you all as well for v day celebrations um okay we're back at the hob now so a lot of this can all be done on the hob. So it's a really easy one to do there. Um, and I would suggest you do it all in the hob. It'll keep your life a lot easier. Um, so Millie, how are you going? How are you doing? Yeah. Yep, she's got there. So here we go, Millie. Um, you okay, okay? Yeah. So what have you got in there? Do you want to talk everyone through what you've got in there, Millie? I've got um, 50 grams of butter, uh, 50 grams of sugar, two tablespoons of um, golden syrup. Okay, and what are you going to do with that? Heat it up. Fabulous. So it's the butter's melted. Okay, so the butter's melted. Yeah. There we go. Oh, you both won. There we go. Um, so it's melted. Um, what do you need to do when it's been melted, Millie? Take it off the heat. Take it off the heat. Perfect. She's got this one down to tea. We made this one yesterday. Again, it was really yummy. Um, so um, real simple ones to do. Use up any leftovers that you might have in the kitchen here um, to do this one. So again, Millie's just doing this one. Um, She's so just heating this one up. Uh, if you want to make quick little um, snap. It's not the healthiest thing in the world, this one. But then we've had carrots in our biscuits. We've had potatoes in our scones. This one's a little bit of a sweet treat, really. There's a lot of uh, not going into this one, but we are using up some stale bread. So we have got that going in there rather than um, too much of everything else to pop it out. But it is quite a sweet treat. So remember with sweet treats, it's OK, part of a balanced diet. Um, but this one is just a, a bit of a sweet treat for the party. Uh, yes, sorry, she wants me to go and get the rest of the ingredients. Let me get the rest of the ingredients. Right, uh, what do I need for me? What am I getting? 50 grams of butter, 50 grams of sugar, 50 grams of cocoa powder. Okay, so I'm just going to get 50 and grams of cocoa. Oh, okay, and the vanilla. Okay, no problems. Uh, which one goes in first? The cocoa, uh, cocoa powder. powder. Right, okay, I'm going to put the cocoa powder. When it's melted, shake it off the heat. Fabulous, we don't want it to burn, do we? No. So take it off the heat, move it up somewhere else, or switch it off. It's nearly melted. Nearly mel it's nearly melted, everybody. Okay, Millie, is that all good? It's all looking good? Millie, done. Tiny little bits left. Tiny little bits left. Right, let me just quickly go while you're doing that, then I'm going to show everyone where we're up to on the... I'm going to quickly jump back to the um, recipe for you there. Wartime recipe number three. Um, okay, so this is wartime recipe number three. Um, wartime recipe are uh, chocolate cake. So we've we've gone all the way up to number four now. Um, we put 50 grams of uh, margarine... Well, Millie, you tell them what's going on. Start from there, what do we do? Uh, 50 grams of margarine and butter in, and then 50 grams of sugar, two tablespoons of golden syrup. <coughs> then put it into onto the hob and um, heat, heat it until the uh, margarine melted and then took it off the hob. Okay, so she's done that. Um, I've just measured out the cocoa and I've got the vanilla for us. So um, let's go back to us. Um, so re really simple, lovely one to do this one. Um, let me uh, let me go back to myself. All right, there, Millie. So uh, there we go. How much is in here? Fifty grams of cocoa. Okay, you show show what you're doing. You, you sort them through it. Uh, just start into it. Then get 
One teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> Just pass it through. What sort of vanilla is it, mate? Little pod. It's a little pod vanilla. We love little pod. Um, there we go. It's quite strong, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's next, Millie? And then put the 100 and put 125 grams of the breadcrumbs in. Oh, okay. I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. So um, we have got. So it's wholemeal bread, so it's quite a dark one there, but if you've got not got wholemeal bread, you might just, uh, yesterday we did it with um, some pastries. Um, so we're just going to be putting in there, this is going to soak it all up, this is using up, I'm see my, I'm on my screen, there we are, let's move our screens down so you can see, there we go. Um, so there's my my toasted bread crumbs, there's Millie's mix, do you want to show the, show the girls, show the rest of the world? It's a bit darker because we have to use dark chocolate. Oh, we've used a dark chocolate cocoa. Yeah, so we've used a dark chocolate cocoa, so Millie's just saying it's a bit darker. Okay, Millie, there we go. So what are you doing now then? I'm going to add more breadcrumbs in. Fabulous. And then just stir it until it's all mixed in. Okay, um, so while she's doing that, I need to do something else. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, in fact, you could do this one as well. So you're going to grease and line the tin. Do you want to show me how to do that one? Yeah. Okay, so um, that's all that'll stir through now. Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. Show this, show everyone in a sec. There we go. Yeah. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, um, you could, if you haven't got that, you could use the end of cornflake packets. So um, cereal packets work really nicely in for this one as well. So if you haven't got breadcrumbs and you need to use up some of the old bits at the end of the cereal packets, you can use those as well. Um, so it's another way of things you can use up there. Uh, okay, that's the scones all done. Millie, show us the scones. Let's have a look at the scones. Uh, we'll probably do a couple more minutes just in there. Let's put another couple of minutes in there. Another minute, another minute. Um, so the scones are nearly done. This is cakes nearly done. I'm nearly done. Let's uh, let's get over. Millie's going to show you how to line a tin um, to put this in. I'm ready to go into it. Let's go back to our bunting. There we go. Da -da -da, v day celebrations. I love it. I love it. I love it. Right, Millie. Um, OK, I'll go and put this over by the window. Yeah, no problems. Um, so Millie is now going to show you how to do the next bit. Now, the easiest way to do this one is if you um, if you wanted to, you could use a, a cake tin or a sit down again, beeping away. Sorry. All right, just put it on for another minute. That'll be OK. All right, so you can use uh, a number of things here. You can use a cake tin if you wanted to, like a loose bottom cake tin here. That would work just as well. Or if you haven't got one of those, um, we're just going to use an old um, one of these. This is just like an, an old takeaway tin. If you've got one of those, you can use a flan tin. You can use a quiche, um, baking uh, around quiche piece there. Whatever you want to do, the quiche, quiche dish, tart dish, whatever you want to use. We, so we're just going to use things that we like recycling, uh, we do. And this is an, I'd say an old one from the takeaway. We just don't want to throw things away, packaging away. We just washed it up and using that instead. So um, you can use that one as well. And that would be what that would work just as well. Right, Millie, uh, we need to grease and line this tin. How do you grease and line a tin? Um, well, you need to get cut out a circle of the greaseproof paper. So what are you doing there then? Just drawing around the bottom. Okay. The okay, so she's just. So it's fills the bottom. Okay. And then what's next? So you need to cut it out so it could. <laughs> so it's scones again. They're just about done. Yeah, I think they're done. Leave those. We'll leave those ones for a minute then. Yeah. Just shut them for those. So it doesn't. I don't know. Leave it for the moment. Our, our oven's gone mad. It's had so much cooking over the last couple of weeks. I'm cooking all sorts. Making croissant yesterday, which is lovely. A sourdough croissant. Um, okay. So what are you doing here? You're just cutting out a cir circle. Fabulous. And where's that circle going to go? It's going to be put into the bottom of the tin. Okay. So then, and then after that, you're going to juice it. Okay. OK, so, so you can see that if you all heard that one, she's going to grease the tin and then she's going to put that one into the bottom of the tin. And then we're going to sub, shove all of our cake mix in there and then we're just going to leave it in the fridge and it will harden up to a proper cake which you can slice up and eat.
Do you want to should we swap places? You stand up. I'm going to go with I'm going to get the scones out for everybody, okay. so show everyone what they look like. You can carry on. You know what? You need to grease it and then line it, and then you can stuff it. You need to tell them what's going on. Line it and then grease. Yeah. Okay. Put it out in the bottom, and then get some butter, and just grease it the whole thing in. Get all around the edges, and then put the bottom as well where you put it. Lining it. I'm just getting the scones out if you're wondering where I am. So, yeah, there you go. And then, some grease. And then, we get the mixture from the pan. And just fill it. And then, it smells really good. Nice. Shove it all the way in, don't you? Yeah, so put it all in and then just press it down with either a spoon or like your hands. And just putting that in. Okay, and then press it in. Still a bit hot, but. Not enough to buy yourself, though, is it? No. Okay, and then that should be what it looks like. And just put it in the fridge for about an hour. Okay. Okay, and then. Okay, so while she's doing that, I am just going to be getting our party food out that we've just made in the time. Okay, here we go. So, we have got three things coming over there. Yep, yeah, do you want to move on up? Move the fish fishes up there, there we go. Right, everybody. So, they are the scones. Um, let's clear the deck here. Um, they are the biscuits. Uh, so we've got scones, biscuits, and there's the cake. So I've just put a bit of icing sugar on the top of there. And uh, this is the one we did uh, a couple of hours ago. Uh, you can slice that one up and you have got your three wartime foods. Let me show you on the screen there. So we have got um, a no cook uh, chocolate cake. We have got the biscuits, the carrot cookies, and we've got our potato scones. There we go, three items, three challenges, three bits for your piece there. So there we have it, um, all three recipes done in a double lesson there. We've got that all done in an hour and 25, 20, less than an hour and 25 minutes, three things cooked. Now I'd like you to have a go at doing these. I would love to see your photos. Please, 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 please send in your photos of what you bake, okay, for BE Day. And uh, don't forget when you have your BE Day parties on Friday, um, stay at home, stay in lockdown, um, you're staying at home and you're having a lockdown party, okay? Um, there's loads going on on Friday. What? Have a look on the television. There's lots of new things coming on there, lots of things happening. We've also got um, uh, uh, silence at 11 o'clock. There's the Queen's speech in the afternoon. Lots going on for our big bank holiday here in the UK to celebrate BE Day. Hopefully you've got some ideas on some VE day wartime recipes you can now do. So you've got the three things. You want to hold one of those up so we can show everyone again. So we've got one of those there. So we've got our foods there for ours. We've got our, our no cook cake, our carrot cookies and the scones there ready for your party. OK, um, all remains to say is until we see each other again, stay safe, take care, look after yourself and look after those around you and enjoy your VE day celebrations on Friday. Thank you very much, everybody. See you soon. Bye.